good morning students so today we are going to discuss about the second part of the chapter we have studied last in the last video session and that is ecosystem in case you have missed the first part go and see the first part then come to part number 2 because it will be easier for you to understand so let us discuss about the presentation content first of all we'll cover decomposition energy flow and then the ecological pyramids in this session so let us move ahead introducing myself again so i am ankesh singh i am your biology teacher and you can reach me at this mail id if you have any kind of doubts so ecosystem we have discussed about this thing in part 1 but for now let us discuss it once again so what is ecosystem the interactions of the living organism among themselves and along with other organisms and other non living substance is known as ecosystem this core term was again coined by ag tansley who was a renowned scientist at that time so in this slide we'll discuss about decomposition energy flow and ecological pyramids as i have said before so the first thing is decomposition so what is decomposition before moving into the process of decomposition we must know the organisms which decomposes so these organisms are known as decomposers which break down the complex substances into inorganic substances like carbon dioxide water and other nutrients and this process of converting complex substances into inorganic substances by the decomposers is known as decomposition the steps involved in decomposition are fragmentation leaching catabolism humification mineralization so these are the points what we have to keep in mind while we are studying decomposition so what is fragmentation fragmentation means breaking down of a complex substance or a big organism into smaller particles like whenever we recognize a forest in that forest there are elephants the largest organism in the forest these organisms when they die where to go when these organisms die they are being broken down into smaller particles by detritivores example earthworm after the detritivores done their work next comes leaching that is the solubilization of the water soluble substances into the soil after that the bacteria and the fungi convert these smaller particles into further decomposition into simple organic substances and the thing which is left out after this process is humification this is nothing but a humus which is a dark colored amorphous substances which are resistant to any kind of microbial action finally the thing which is left out is humus and other than that what we have we have minerals these minerals are added up into the soil in this process of decomposition the most important factors are temperature and soil moisture so the temperature and soil moisture somehow or the other affects this process of decomposition as you can see in the diagram below this is a process of decomposition of a fruit which takes place in the ecosystem following these steps what we have discussed just now and in all these steps are being controlled by two factors temperature and soil moisture now the next thing it is energy flow what is energy flow the main source of energy needed for the sustenance of life on earth is solar energy the energy what we use in our day to day life comes from the sun using the solar energy but majority of this solar energy is not used only 2 to 3% of this solar energy is being used by the organisms on the world and the first organism which converts this solar energy into chemical energy by the process of photosynthesis are the plants this food which is produced by the plants are being used by the rest of the world for their own energy demands whenever we need energy we take food this food comes from where it comes from plants so somehow or the other we are indirectly or directly related to these plants for our energy consumption next all the energy that is produced by the organisms passes on to the next trophic level whatever energy a organism produces like a plant produces it is passed on to the next generation for the consumers only a portion of this energy is transferred from one generation to another in the last point of what i have said i have said that the energy passes from one generation or one level to another level this transfer of energy from one level to another level causes and it takes only 10% from the previous level this is known as a 10% law of energy flow 
what does this mean this means if 100 kilojoule of energy is produced by the plants then only 10 percent of 100 kilojoule that is 100 kilojoule will be transferred to the next organisms that is the herbivores whenever a carnivore eats a herbivore the 10 percent of that 100 kilojoule that is only 10 kilojoule is transferred to the carnivores so this is what is the main point of discussion here this energy flow takes place in two different food chains one is grazing food chain the second one is detritus food chain what is grazing food chain grazing food chain occurs in the living organisms whenever they are living whenever a tiger is living he is eating a deer a deer is eating a grass this helps us to understand the flow of energy from grass to deer to the tiger and this flow of energy is known as energy flow and this kind of ecosystem and this kind of food chain is known as grazing food chain on the other hand when the tiger dies the energy from the tiger is taken away by these microorganisms and bacteria and fungi and earthworms this food chain is known as detritus food chain so somehow or the other these decomposers also are dependent on the plants for their energy demands so you can see the diagram here it shows the flow of energy from one trophic level to another next comes a big concept regarding this one so what we have studied till now a big concept regarding it is what no energy is trapped into an organism remains in it forever like i have taken some kind of food that food contains a kind of energy that energy won't be trapped inside me for my lifetime after i die or uh, while i am living i will release that energy in different forms either it can be heat energy or any different kind of energies next comes the continuation of the previous slide what is being written out here when an organism die it is converted to detritus that serve energy for the decomposers i have said previous also that whenever an organism die the energy that is present inside those organisms is taken up by the decomposers organisms of each level depends on the pre-existing level for filling their energy demands if i am a carnivore and i eat only flesh then i am totally depending on the herbivores which is taking energy from the plants in turn that means what if i need energy i have to eat food and i have to depend on my lower levels each energy level contains a certain mass of living organism that is known as standing crop like if we consider a big field it contains grass the total amount of mass of that grass is known as standing crop if i have 10 deers on it then the total mass of those 10 deers is known as the standing crop and if I consider one tiger in that field, then that one tiger's mass is known as the standing crop for that level. This standing crop is measured as the mass of living organisms or the number in a unit area. Here I have discussed about a field. That means what? It will contain obviously a, a area. If I divide it with unit area, then I can get the amount of standing crop. So this is an image which shows that a deer is eating grass, whereas the deer is in turn chased by the cheetah and he will ultimately consume that deer in the later half now comes ecological pyramid here you can see a diagram of a pyramid so what is a pyramid whenever we remember of egypt or whenever we think of egypt we think of the pyramid so pyramid contains a flat base and a pointed head whenever we put biomass number or energy of a food chain in an orderly manner it generates a pyramid structure the base of the pyramids is made up of what the produces whereas the top of the pyramid is made up of what the top consumer level the pyramids what we know what we know in class 12 are pyramids of number pyramids of biomass and pyramid of energy the pyramid of biomass is generally inverted why because if you see a sea then it contains planktons millions and millions of planktons and then numbers of fishes the size of the fish the mass of the fish is much more compared to that of the mass of the the total mass of the planktons that means what whenever we consider about a biomass then at the base the biomass is low as we move further the biomass gets increased the pyramid of energy is always uprised because the energy of the preceding level is much more compared to that of the next level as we can see in this diagram as we can see in this diagram the energy of this level is much more compared to that of this one and similarly it goes on 
A pyramid of number can either be upright, example for a grassland food chain or it can be inverted for a detritus food chain. Example grassland food chain is given out here. Detritus food chain you can think a tiger or a elephant is dead. On that dead elephant the vultures come, 10 vultures comes and the, then the elephant is again decomposed by millions and millions of bacteria and then finally it gets decomposed. So as we move forward the size of it decreases or increases. So it can either be upright or it can be inverted. So what have we studied in this session? We have studied about decomposition, we have studied about energy flow and we have studied about the ecological pyramids which are the three other important functions of the ecosystem. In the previous video lecture we have studied about one more thing can you answer me that one if yes then good if you can't answer then just go to the previous video and study about that thing and after that we have studied decomposition energy flow and ecological pyramids so this sums up today's video hope you have liked this video so thank you all see you all in the next session until then goodbye